And welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. My name is Chris, bringing it to you here from Westlake Village, California. We are going to get some sunshine today. I'm excited about it. And what do we got going on here? Look at this. The next bank to fail. First Republic Bank down 32%. Trailing behind them is Western Alliance Bank Corporation. And look, we got the CP Lie report two days ago. We got PP Lie yesterday. And today's jobless claims coming out a little more honest than expected. And here's what I mean by honest jobless claims actually went down. So people still got their jobs. That's bullish for the dollar. <clears throat> Additionally, you've got housing starts, which are up, and building permits, which are up. I wonder if inflation is under control, pal. And uh, look, now what are we talking about? The cracks are coming in. Credit Swiss Bank down. JP Morgan about to get hosed. Bank of America about to get hosed or already getting hosed. Wells Fargo breaking this to the downside. Looks like they're going to get hosed. So what do I want to bring us... Uh, to is a tweet that I just twittered. I'm not much of a tweeter, but here you go. And I hate to even show this. The New York Times posted this five days ago. It's a comparison of the 2008 banks that got wiped out, resulting in $307 billion in, in you know, failure. Uh, compared to Silicon Valley Bank, which was $209 billion, which is just a lie. Um, it's, it's a straight up lie because we know that SBV Bank is now the second largest bank failure in history. They had $320 billion. They went bankrupt in one day. So again, my baseline prediction has been a financial crisis this year. And a failure in the bond market, which I believe we're just beginning to see the cracks. And just wait, if Powell goes ahead and raises rates 25 basis points on the 21st, it's not going to be good. And Silvergate Bank, so here's the bank failures so far. We had Silvergate Bank fail, <clears throat> SBV went under, Signature Bank just went under, and they keep halting the trading. It's market manipulation. Charles Schwab, they even were halted the other day. And now it's First National Bank. They are halted. So Biden says, don't worry. Everything's under control. Don't worry. Everybody's secure. And we're going to bank stop. <laughs> we're going to backstop everybody's deposits. So Essentially, what the federal government is doing is they are tanking, they're taking over the banking system. They, they prevented a bank run, in a sense. That's what they did. And of course, don't worry, Biden says, taxpayers are going to pay nothing. And uh, look, this is not a black swan event. It's been predicted by Ray Dalio. It's been predicted by Jim Rickards. It's been predicted by Jeremy Grantham. And ha, huh, I even did a little prediction way back when in June this year, and I, I called it out on the six-month time frame. We had this bearish engulfing candle that came in right here. And I said, look, this has only happened two other times in history. Once was 1973, ahead of a 10-year bear market. Once was 1929, ahead of a 10-year bear market. Now, we're getting a lot of new subscribers. Thank you guys so much for subscribing to the channel. Don't forget to like and post it in the like. Uh, but the most important thing you can do if you want to learn how to trade and follow these markets is go to our resource center at bitcoinadvisors.com. Learn how to set up trading view and follow along, guys. It takes 15 minutes. You'll be able to track all these assets, gold, silver, bank stocks, uh, you can even join the Discord, which we're getting a lot of new members, and join a tight knit community of traders where you get free trade setups and um, and really kind of get some understanding of the market. So you have an investment strategy, a plan uh, to go forward in these markets. Because I've been saying it since the beginning of the year, this is the year of risk management. Which, if you don't have that, um, you are going to get hurt. 
very, very likely. And look at Bitcoin putting in a little rally here on the hourly time frame. But is it enough? Is it enough to really get the party going? I, I mean, look, I, you know, I'm gonna stick with the, stick with my thesis here. You know, and here's what it is: is when you got the biggest banks in the world doing, you know, crashing, um, alongside the biggest stocks in the world crashing, unless we have a decoupling event. Um, in which, you know, all of a sudden stocks go down. Look at Tesla, Tesla from the all time high, huge down, probably going to get sold off this green 55. You got a death cross on the hourly time frame, on the daily. I mean, it's, it's, it's looking droopy, droopy Roku down 60% Uber down massive this year, Verizon down. I mean, the biggest companies in the world getting hit. And what I'm talking about here is not only the NASDAQ, which is, to be fair, we, we had a target on the NASDAQ popping up here at 1260, a uh, little double bottom action here. But um, as Christine Lagarde just raised the market, the basis points, the, the interest rate in the Eurozone, 50 basis points. I thought she was going to maybe save the day and say, hey, we're bet bailing out Credit Suisse. We're not going to raise rates. And apparently that inflation thing is a big concern still in Europe. So um, at the end of the video today, I'm going to go over my favorite trade setups on CFX, VRA, and um, what's the other one? Stacks. I got to bring that one to the top of my list. There's another one on SVB. Um, uh, <clears throat> Sorry, S, it, it's the, the Binance coin, one of the Binance coins, which, let's see, where are my stacks? I guess I gotta, I gotta put it back. Oh, there it is. So I'm gonna bring this to the top of my list here. We'll go over this at the end of the session here. And uh, make sure you do, you know, like and subscribe if you enjoy some of the content, I'd appreciate it. Um, other than that, uh, you know, Resource Center, Setup Trading View, Join the Discord, and all right, let's get into Bitcoin price action. I'm gonna make it short and sweet today, guys. And uh, look, we did say, hey, any kind of a tick above yesterday's high, very likely gonna come up really to the uh, to the pivot on the day, and that's, that is the line in the sand for me, 25,780. If we can get a daily closure above there and hold above there, that's gonna look good for some continuation. Um, right now, currently posting a higher high and potentially a higher low on the hourly time frame. Really, uh, this is the one that I want to see and it's all but done here in the next hour and 13 minutes. Um, if we can close a four hour closure back above 25,248, that will uh, call it 25,363, which is probably going to be that pivot right there. But, uh, Apparently, people are going, wow, I need to get out of my banks. I don't trust the bank anymore. I'd rather trust Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a free way to store your money. You no longer have to leave your money at the bank, the biggest Ponzi scheme in the world. So uh, any kind of a four-hour closure back above 2534, I do believe we'll visit the top side of the range. But the most important thing is we got to close the day above there. Additionally, uh, the five-day time frame is going to close today, and this is an important one. Bullish engulfing uh, candle. I mean, this would imply continuation on the next closure. However, if the dollar starts to rip to the upside, again, we have a key level on the dollar, which the daily time frame did break above it. We are testing this trend line. Uh, today is... Thursday and is known for being a down day for Bitcoin. So currently up 2.6%. I guess that th theory is not going to hold for today. Um, but importantly, on the dollar index, we're getting some volatility here. We had a big move up and um, I'm not getting much from this hourly time frame. Momentum remains to the upside as long as we're above 104.37. Volatility is low, and to me, this looks like a bit of a buy if you were going to long the dollar. Why would the dollar go down when the rest of the world, um, well, maybe the euro is going up. 
Um, maybe the yen is going up. Interest rate hikes coming. So March 21st. So again, the economic data came out bullish for the dollar today. Um, it's just the beginning of the day. People are just waking up. It's 7.48 a.m. Pacific time. Things are well away on the East Coast. And so uh, back on a Bitcoin base case scenario, we're coming into that major trend line on at 25,000. 25,000. And uh, again, you know, the momentum is crossed down. We'll cross. Oh, it, dis, it, it will cross back up above 25, sorry, 24,992. Um, kind of uncrossing itself there. And then I'm going to have to check in on some of my other coins here in a minute um, as those trade setups might not work out. If Bitcoin puts in a rally, um, it could, it could, you know, it could get invalidated. So I'm going to jump into, again, why? Let's look at the bullish case for Bitcoin. Let's look at the bearish case. So you know, again, just a tick above yesterday's high. I do believe um, we get a free ride up to 25,000, maybe even 26. Um, you know, the shorts, I, I really just don't see how, how people aren't going to short the, short the bejesus out of this thing with, um, with all the financial contagion out there. Unless what I'm hearing is rumor of a $2 trillion bailout. Two trillion dollar bailout. Why the ba the trillion dollar bailout? That was back then. Um, I, yeah, I I don't see the exact news, but I imagine it has to do with bailing out all the depositors. Let's see if the Kobisi letter has anything nice to say today about the markets. Yeah, just in, ECB raises rates 50 basis points despite the banking system worries. This morning, the ECB said some EU banks could be vulnerable to further deterioration. Rates are rising at the fastest pace in recent history. Meanwhile, CS is borrowing $54 billion to avoid a collapse. So um, while everybody's focused on the banks, the U.S. debt crisis is worsening. The debt ceiling is not raised. The U.S. could default by July. If the ceiling is raised, U.S. debt could hit $50 trillion in 10 years. Annual interest rates on the debt will equal 25% of U.S. government revenue. And Goldman Sachs estimates the breach of the debt ceiling will immediately halt 10% of U.S. economic activity. This was cost. This would cost three million jobs and result in a rise in interest rates that adds on one hundred and thirty thousand on the average mortgage. Wow! So, um, you know, Bitcoin fighting the good fight, and I want to go over some of those macro ideas, macro reversal ideas, which you know um, I've been telling people if you want to get the bullish and bearish divergence cheat sheet. All you got to do is email us at info at bitcoinadvisors.com and you will get the bullish and bearish divergence cheat sheet, which that is probably the number one way to trade if you ask me and i um, giving it away for free. So feel free to uh, email us if you want to get the cheat sheet. Um, so what was I saying? Uh, all right, let's go over some of those macro ideas and the different ideas we use to identify when there is a macro low in. And the first one is this, and this is the case for the bulls, guys. A case for the bulls, a case for the bullas. Case for the bullas, and here's what it is. First things first, on the weekly time frame, we want to see a higher high and a higher low. And, you know, to me, this would be good enough. If the week closes, and to be fair, things, you know, yeah. This is a higher high than this high. Higher high than this high. So let's give it the benefit of the doubt here. We got the higher high and the higher low right here. And we're getting another higher low and another higher high if we close anywhere, you know, above these wicks. Now, if this comes down today and another very, yeah, so that's the first step. 
The second step, we wanted to see extreme lows on BBWP, and we did have that on the weekly time frame way back here, November 2022. And you can see the explosive move that uh, resulted therein. And, you know, since the bottom of the market, Bitcoin has rallied, you know, um, 70%. So nice bear market rally, but point for the bulls. And then on the weekly time frame, we wanted to see the blue buy signal on the hash ribbons indicator. We did get that right there. Okay, funding rates. Let's check out those funding rates. And this is actually important. And I haven't been checking in on this um, over the past couple of days. Why? Well, it's hard to check in on all these things here. But <clears throat> here's essentially what you want to see is the not 0.1% hit, which when was that hit? In November alongside low BBWP. That was a good indicator. So essentially the cost to go short was extremely high there. I hope I'm getting that right. I always get these confused a little bit, but uh, the funding rates on futures contracts, not point one two, you know, not point one percent. That's an extreme read. And I do, that's either the cost to go. That's either the cost to go long or short. Let's see, right now, is it costing you more to go long or to go short? It's probably costing you more to go long. So am I signed in here? I gotta sign in. Let's see what funding rates are at right now. So right in the middle. I mean, we're, we're it's basically the cost to borrow on futures contract right now, not 0.993%, that's basically a nothing burger. So nothing on the extreme side. We have not gone up to not 0.01%. And let's just go back for a little bit of history here. So yeah, this is where it's costing you to go long. When it's in positive territory, when it's negative, it's costing you to go short. And that is was a big short squeeze down there, that's for sure. Okay, so for a low to be in, and to be fair, look at this last read. Did we get down to not 0.1%? Not quite. Close enough, close enough. Back in March this year. Nope, not not quite there. But we did have it back in November. So I'll, I'll give that point to the bulls there. Uh, lastly, we want to see the golden cross on the daily time frame, which a golden cross is when the green 55 crosses the, excuse me, let me get down my regular charts here on the daily chart. When the green 55 crosses to the upside and generally look, this, this is a good buy signal. I mean, you, you got the golden cross, price action sucked into the cross, spit back up to the upside. Could this be the decoupling from the stock market? Well, look, to be fair, stocks are going up and heading up to our target right now at uh, 12,598. And that does line up with Bitcoin bouncing a little bit more here, a little bit more. But um, will the battle cry end? Oh, news in. JP Morgan talking about bolstering First Republic Bank. Are they going to bail them out? Okay. Um, so that, you know, we got five out of six right now. Five out of six. Now the next one is an extreme read on the fear and greed index. And again, these are all, how do I identify when a macro low is in? And here we go, over the last year. So extreme read, we did not get this one. This is the only criteria I'd say did not get fulfilled. We wanna see an extreme fearful zone. We wanna see capitulation. That is the max point of fear, all the sellers sell. And why do they sell? Because they think everything's going to zero, right? And this is, you know, happened a few times in history. This was 
July 2021. This was March 2020. Oh, that was, yeah, that was $3,000 Bitcoin. This was back in 2018, uh, you know, $4,000 Bitcoin. So an extreme read would be nice um, to line up. Now, adding Confluence, uh, somebody did point out on our Discord and on our live stream yesterday, um, adding some Confluence, adding some context. Um, somebody did add this to the Discord, you know, commented on this. And this is it, monthly. Oh, this is this is ultimate target for the dollar, by the way. And uh, something to note here: the month is going to be closing in two more weeks. So let's see the biweekly on the dollar. You know, still overall case is for the dollar to rally up into this green box uh, invalidation. You know, closer back. You know, back below this low here on the biweekly, and yeah, probably going to come down much lower for the dollar, but. Silf, so far, my case is dollar probably going to rally, and that, that does line up with some more downside. Um, and I'm going to have to make some adjustments here real quick, real soon. Anyways, I'm going to go over those trades in just a second. But here's what I wanted to talk about on Bitcoin on the monthly time frame. I will use the... Oh, that's the two week. Here we go. Monthly time frame. So we got hidden bullish divergence. Price is making. And, and we got it coming back from quite some time. I mean, all the way from over here. So that. That. Is a huge thing. Monthly hidden bullish divergence. I mean, that could give you a shot to the mid range there at 44,000. That was confirmed. Volatility is declining now. Monthly Stokes also crossing to the upside. So um, we got the monthly bullish divergence. We got the monthly accumulation distribution indicator and monthly Stokes. Yeah. So it's almost, uh, so again, I was just pointing out monthly hidden bullish divergence. If you want the cheat sheet, email us. Um, I, at the beginning of the stream, go back and look at it. I put the email in. You can get the cheat sheet for monthly, uh, for bullish divergence. So where is the BLX index? I just want to point, point it out a little bit more. BLX, BLX, there it is, okay. So coming back from this low right here, or more importantly, this low. You're gonna have one higher low versus a lower low. Two. So call it two drives gives you a shot to the 21, which we've already gotten that shot to be fair. And if you have the cheat sheet, you'll know what that means. But basically, we've got one, two. Now, some might call this one, one, two, three. But this is the read you want to see for a macro low on the monthly di divergence. You know, you can see uh, the last time divergence was confirmed just to the one drive variety. Uh, we got a shot <clears throat> all the way up to the all time high, pretty much on a closing basis. So now that we are getting one, and if you go back farther, I mean, to be fair, right? Go back to this low. Why don't we, why don't we do, I mean, this could be the biggest rally we've seen in history. And that's why it makes sense to have some Bitcoin in your portfolio. I mean, we are down 69% from the high. If we do get that massive rally to the top side of the range, you know, that's double from where we're at today getting out of the bearish control zone. And <clears throat> again, I'm not sold on it because of the black swan event, the biggest bubble pop in history. Um, you know, definitely good to have risk management in times like this. So monthly stokes are crossing up. You can see every time that's happened, we've had massive rallies. This one, So I want to give some bullish news. Crossed up there. Crossed up there. 
crossed up there and let's see some of the results. Boom, 6,000% rally. Boom, 1,200% rally. 6,000. So what would, roughly, let's say it gets caught in a third and we just go up. So we got a 1,200, let's say we get a 300% rally. Where would that take us? 300% from where we're at today. Yeah, right up to the top side of this thing. One more, one more. Uh, so that's three times where we're at today and then another sell off at 72,000, something like that. Just using a little statistics and probabilities there to goose the odds in favor of the bulls, in favor of the bulls. And the last thing I will bring up on the secondary chart. So we got the monthly MACD, which has not crossed up yet. So again, um, I'm just going to put this up here for you guys. Check this out. Screenshot this. We got everything. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I should put these in green if they're good. Uh, eight, nine. All right. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten things we use. All ten things are hit except for this one and this one. If we check all 10 boxes off, guys, I'm ready to party to the upside and have no regrets with going long, okay? Now, short term, I'm gonna go back and show you why I am thinking, here's probably some of the better trade setups. I could be wrong, this isn't financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor, but here's what I'm seeing in the charts. Digging deep, for some bear news, and you can already see this right here. Hidden bearish divergence on the hourly time frame for Bitcoin, and this is quite a bit of a divergence. But uh, you know, could you have confirmed it right here? Yes, in my book, you could have. But if you really want to be, if you really want to be smart with it. An hourly closure back below this level. Probably good enough for me if you want to be aggressive. If you want to be even conservative, right? Hourly below 20, call it 24,000. And I'm looking for this green box to get hit. I want this green box to get hit. We get one more. And here's one more thing to note and why I think we could come back down lower. I'm glad I'm putting all my thoughts out on paper here, guys. After you get this weekly blue buy signal, a lot of times what happens is you come back and retest the lows. So I'm going to clean this up just a little bit for you guys. Take off those Bollinger Bands. I don't know why I have so many indicators on this thing. So many indicators. I know that's all, always the comment I get is, oh, Chris, you got so many indicators. What are all these things? And the last one I did not go over is the accumulation distribution indicator on the monthly time frame, which is now has a positive slope. So again, more confluence, and that was the last one there. Um, this is a good video today, guys. I hope you guys are subscribing and uh, hope you guys are enjoying some of the content because I'm enjoying it. I do this for me, not for you. Just kidding. Um, getting back on into it. So what, what, what I was talking about here is on the weekly, all right, let me get this off the screen. So you can see it a little more clearly. I'm gonna take off the MACD. I'm gonna take off the, yeah, the blue buy. Yeah, I'm gonna take off the accumulation distribution indicator. I'm gonna show you what tends to happen after the blue buy signal. You get the blue buy signal, and then you basically get one more test down to the lows. And that would be that 18.5 target that we've been talking about. Um, something like that. So like this would not be a good example. And this is one of, I mean, yeah, we made, to be fair, we had the blue buy signal, got new all time highs. But um, how about this one? Blue buy signal, new all time highs. Okay. 
Here is more in line with what I'm talking about here. Blue buy signal, boom, from 9,000 to 12,000, back down to 9,900. So you almost retest the lows, but you don't break it, okay? Um, is this another one? So we're here, boom, 7,600, 10,500, come back down to 8,800, okay? Here's another one right here. This was a failed setup, to be fair. So we got the blue buy. We rallied from 7,100 up to 10,000. And then you're not supposed to take out the prior low. So this one has failed two times out of 18 in its history. Uh, let's throw back on the BLX index because uh, this is the one we want to check. Okay, here's another good one. Blue buy signal coming in here at 34.91. Here's the low at 3,200. We came all the way back down to 33.90 before rallying to the moon, right? Rallying to the moon from 3,000 to, so to be fair, the blue buy signal in itself is just pretty phenomenal. Let's go over another one right here. This is coming in from way down when in July, 2015. And right, this is right when I started to look at Bitcoin. I'll never forget this day, this kid, he was selling pizza the month before. Name is Mr. Essex. I was working at a gold firm. He came in, he said, hey man, you gotta buy Bitcoin, man. I was selling pizza last month, but you better stop selling gold and buy some Bitcoin. And I laughed at him. I said, I will never buy that magic internet money. I don't want anything to do with it. I'm never going to go to a liquor store and put my money in a Bitcoin ATM and get a little piece of paper that says I own some Bitcoin. Are you kidding? Well, here it was. So, and here is what I think could happen. Bitcoin's at $249, rallies up to $313. But then what happens? It comes back and tests the low, does not close below the low on a closing basis. That on a candle bottle close, you can still see this is a higher low. And this is, again, trend reversal conditions, what we're talking about on the weekly time frame. So we're getting lower lows, lower high. Okay, higher low. Higher low, okay. We got a higher low on the weekly time frame. Higher high, higher low. Boom. Trend reversal. Gosh, I would have, I would have liked to get in on that one. Would have loved to get on that one. From two hundred dollars up to, you know, the average increase on this indicator. I don't know. Close enough is close enough. Thousand percent gainer to the next high. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. All right, now getting down to the meat and potatoes of what I wanted to talk about here on the hourly time frame. I'm going to get back on my regular chart here. By the way, if you want to set up trading view, you want to set up trading view, you want to set up trading view and follow along. The number one thing I can recommend if you want to learn how to trade, set up trading view, follow along. Set up trading view, follow along. It's the only way you're going to learn how to do it. Um, and not be dependent upon um, everybody else to do it. Right, but that's okay too. You know, if uh, that's your choice, everybody has a choice. Everybody's got a choice, despite what they say. Those feminists, yes, women. Women are so much more powerful. Let me tell you a story about the number one boxer in the world. He goes, he goes to the boxing match. He goes in the ring. He trains for a year. He stops sleeping with his wife for six months before the fight to build up that testosterone. And then what happens? He goes to the fight. He wins. He makes $40 million or whatever he makes. And then what happens? He goes back home and he goes, here, wife, here is the check. He brings the check home to the wife. The wife rules the markets the woman 
She rules the market. Women are strong. Women are tough. I love my women. I love my woman. Um, and the women in my life, so important. My daughters, um, most amazing gift ever. Anyways, that, <clears throat> that's my two cents about women. I don't know how I got on that. But we're going to go into the trade setups for this guy right here. So CFX, um, what I have denoted here, and if you look at the four drive philosophy, it looks like we are going to get that. Any kind of a closure below here will confirm this as a local high. If you didn't already confirm it on this tick, which I technically would, moving off the moving averages. Nope, not quite. Not quite, but we will have a chance to do it in the next 45 minutes on the hourly time frame. Um, but more importantly, on the daily time frame. No, on the four hour. Here we go. Do I see it on the four hour? Price is making a higher high. RSI is making a lower high right there. Oh, we need the other chart. Here we go. This is it. This is it, guys. Getting kicked out of the bearish control, out of the bullish control zone. This is what you want to see. Any kind of a closure like this on the RSI. Now all we all we need is volatility to tick up and momentum to remain to the downside and will remain down as long as we are closing in below 30 cents on CFX. And as you can see, this one rallied to the moon, got shafted down a bit, popped back up. This is looking like a classic double top. Now, sometimes when these things happen, it's bullish. I mean, when Bitcoin did this from the 2018 high and we got back up to 20,000, we shot right back through it, right? So a lot's going to be decided today. NASDAQ is now getting a bounce. ECB keeps its word on the 50 basis point rate hikes. And the question is, will Powell keep his word? And let's check out the CME Fed tool now which I don't know how worthwhile this is because uh, it's not. It's flip-flopping like a yo-yo here. Now there's a 79% uh, chance that we're going to get 25 basis points. Again, this is going to happen on the 21st coming in in, what is that, five days from today? Five days from today. So today's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Monday, Tuesday next week is the day to be watching out for. Tuesday, and it could be game on. If Pal does the rate hike, I'd say it's, I don't know. I don't know what to think at this point, guys. That's why I depend on my charts. So, um, as you can see, kind of this is the major trend line. Back below here on any kind of a four-hour closure, Below 26 cents, I'm expecting a big move down and probably revisits the lows here at about 13 cents. Um, and again, this is multiple, multiple drives of hidden bearish divergence, hidden bearish divergence. Price is making higher highs coming all the way back from this point right here, right? You see the RSI, the price is making all these higher highs, yet the RSI showing the strength of the move and even going back to here, all the way to here. Wow, this is this is really, uh, you know, for an asset that hasn't been around this long, right? Which, how long has it been around? Oh, maybe it has been around for a while. Um, but going back from even the four hour time frame, this would look really nice. Really, 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 really nice. And that's typically what you want to see is a test of that exponential kick back down. And we got 42 minutes left. A lot can happen in 42 minutes. So again, even on the 30 minute time frame, you can see this is what divergence is, guys. This is why this is such a powerful tool. If this trade plays out and you guys don't email me for the cheat sheet, Higher, high, higher, high, higher, high, right? And lower high, lower high, lower high, lower lie, <laughs> lower lie, lower lie. 
So you're getting all these lower highs in confluence with higher highs in price action. And look, confirmed on that tick. And what else was I going to mention on the four hour? Yes. So what else is in confluence with this is a bull trap scenario when the when we come right up to the 618 fib or the not fives. To be fair, it could get a little higher 31 cents in the cards, perhaps, you know, on a little backfill on a Bitcoin rally here, Bitcoin cannot crack above 25,000 25,000 seems to be the line in the sand. Now you got NASDAQ up. Are we heading to our target? Are we getting to the target? And I believe we did post this in the discord. Let's see. You know, I'm so bad at posting this stuff in the discord. Um, let's see. Let's see. I, I know. I'm getting a telephone call. We did post a lot of trade setups. The green box is essentially the target we're looking to get hit. Um, overall, which, what one was it? This is Bitcoin. This is Bitcoin's target. We're looking to get hit. Um, these things don't happen in two seconds. AGIX target looking to get hit. Um, JP Morgan. Let's, well, that's the target looking to get hit at 119. I do believe JP is going to come down hard. And where was our NASDAQ target? I guess it's a little bit late to post that one. But if you've been following our streams, uh, ETH, ETH did hit that target at 1357. So check this out. And that target is going to get hit. And I imagine it sells off from there. Pump rally, fake rally. And uh, da, 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 da. so this is, you know, a little bit on the bullish side, but there's two hours left on this candle. So sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm degrading here. It's been a long stream. Okay. Last setup that I'm going to, uh, I'm going to post in the discord here is the VRA. So again, um, VRA. Coming all the way back from this pivot right here, you can see all these higher high, higher high, higher high, confirmed higher high, and now bull trap. <clears throat> and to be fair, yeah, even from this pivot right here on the four hour time frame, typically gonna get you that move to the bottom side of the range. And you can see this is gonna be the major pivot on Mr. VRA. If we can get back below, look at the wicks, all the confluence here. Um, Lots of confluence here. So any kind of a four hour closure below there, and I'm looking for a big move down. So we still got Friday tomorrow. Is everybody gonna dump it out? I do not wanna give a target down there. That is a little bit too extreme for me. So let's, let's try something a little more simple. Even that is just crazy, but that is the target. So obviously invalidation with a four hour closure back above, um, not 0.5, boom, boom. Yep. So if you were going to enter, enter stop loss above the previous high, I'd probably use the range wick high there. Doesn't, I mean, that's a huge gap there. So, you know, beware. <laughs> you could take a big loss on this one. But the risk to reward setup here is pretty massive. And that's why I am taking the trade right now. I think um, we're more in line for a bit of a crisis here. But who knows, Powell could bail out the market. They could announce some kind of new stimulus plan to bail out the markets. 
Uh, to be fair, you know, four hour momentum did cross to the upside. Volatility is increasing. And I mean, that could be bullish divergence. Yeah, coming back from this high. So minimum, I'm actually don't enter there. I would I would be looking to enter somewhere around the top side of the range. That would be it. That would be the setup. So let's, you know, let's call it game on below this region at not point not not 57 cents and the entry right there. Much, much, much more likely to do something like that. So Here's how I'm going to, I'm going to label this for you. I'm going to throw it on our discord and I think I'm running out of time guys. I showed, showed you guys VRA, CFX, stacks. This one again has the bearish divergence signatures. Bit of a higher high there, but is it a lower high in RSI? Nope. But from this pivot, yes massive divergences all the way around invalidation above there and at a minimum i would be looking for this one to come down to the 618 coming in right here all right so i'm gonna i'm gonna draw this out for you i just took all the time to do that so let's do it Stop. Entry. CP one. And then Okay. There we go. CP two. Boom. Okay. It'll be exciting to see how these trades work themselves out. Okay, now I'm going to go here. Copy. Copy. Paste in the Discord. Add everybody. Look, don't trade unless you can afford to lose all your money. Don't trade unless you can afford to lose all the money that you have. Again, I will repeat, don't trade unless you have a plan or you know what you're doing. Um, but part of learning is you start out tracking the long trading view and then doing mock trades, paper trades. If you haven't traded before, start out with a paper account. That means you write down, oh, I would sell here and then I would take profit here, right? You have to have the entry, exit, and risk management. I'll repeat that over and over and over to the day I die, entry, exit, risk management. Stacks. Bullish divergence. This thing just getting kicked out of the bearish control zone will remain down below 93 cents. I think this one probably gonna come down, guys. Um, but again, uh, needs to close back below here. And, you know, you do have this trend line coming in right there. And another trend line coming back from this pivot right here. So, yeah, I, I think, yeah. It's amazing how some of these pivots will get hit over time. Um, closure below 73 cents. I'm looking for this trend line to get hit. Um, so want to front run the signal by entering here. Do I see any divergence? No, we'll cross up above 93 cents. We got 30 minutes left on this four hour candle. So everything hanging on the four hour time frame in the next 30 minutes. Now, problem is 30 minute is crossed up putting in a little bit of a buy signal, grinding up against the top side of the bearish control zone, and there's bearish divergence. So 
if this thing rolls over and we close anywhere below here, below the 382, and I'm looking for this one to make a big swipe down. You know, just getting out of the bearish control zone. Typically, you know, you want to have the bearish divergence coming from a higher level. See how these, these are higher highs, these are lower highs, and that was the sell right there. I mean, close below that wick and boom, down. That was a nice one. So now bullish divergence on the other side. Yes, indeed. So it can go either way on this one. We could get, here's what I would like to do is see this thing run right back up to the top side, maybe one more time. So entry on the 618 right there. Entry there. Stop loss right above here. You could probably do it right there, actually. Right above this wick right there. Let's see if we got, what are the EMAs saying? Yeah, they're all getting tightly wound up right there. This thing's gonna smash up or down, depending upon what Bitcoin does. If Bitcoin's gonna come down to the rest of the market. You know, it's Thursday. Thursday's supposed to be a down day, guys. It's It's been down days for the past few months. Uh, a lot of down days on Thursday. Not sure exactly uh, what's going on here today and how Bitcoin is holding itself up. Maybe it's those macro higher term time frame indicators. Um, you know, barring that we don't have any major bad news the rest of the day, I'd say that um, you know what I'd love to see is this this happen. I'm going to stretch out this box and then I'm going to let you guys go. All right. I'm going to post that one in the discord as well. Dax, where did it go? Did I post that last one in there? I did. Okay. So this is the one. I'm going to put the text in here. And Let's make this our target. Now I'm gonna, yeah, give me give me a little wider zone here. We are talking about a four hour time frame. Very likely we'll get a bounce off and off 0.5 of the 618. We already got the first bounce back up to the 236 and next shot down is the 618. That is the target. <clears throat> So overall, below this box for stacks, bad. Um, specifically, 73 cents. And that, okay, so now let's, uh, add one more. I'll, I'll raise it up here. Anywhere along that bottom side trend line would look good for me. All right. Add that text up here a little bit. Stop. Let's see how the ball folds. Let's see how the, how, how the, uh, I'm just going to give you guys one last reminder here. If you want to get the cheat sheet for bullish and bearish divergence, uh, that is the way to go. Um, just email us uh, cheat sheet for bullish and bearish divergence, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and we will shoot that out to you for free.
I hope you guys have a blessed and highly favored day and make lots of money today, guys. Make lots of money, whether you are, or just have fun. Be a blessing to somebody else in your life. It is always better to give than to take. So if you can give back to your community, to your family, uh, to your friends, be a giver. And, um, you know, things, things tend to work out that way. Discord. Okay. Wow, this was a long one today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you guys next time. Take care. Take care. Signing out.